Iran's top nuclear scientist was assassinated today. Has been killed in an ambush near the capital Tehran. The mastermind behind the country's covert nuclear weapons program. The killing of Mohsan Fakhrizadeh are nothing short of astonishing. Neither Israel nor the United States has commented. Israel has long been suspected of killing a number of Iranian nuclear scientists, but has refused to comment on this attack. The scientist was known as the mastermind of Iran's covert atomic bomb program. This man was very important. I received leaked information from the country's government about the assassination of Iran's leading nuclear scientist on Friday. A few days after the nuclear deal was announced, he released his latest book. Here it is. It's a 400-page screed detailing his plan to destroy the state of Israel. Following his early morning routine, Iran's top nuclear scientist woke up an hour before dawn, immersing himself in Islamic study before starting his day. Later in the afternoon, he and his wife would depart from their Caspian Sea holiday home and journey to Absard, an exclusive resort town east of Tehran, favored by Iran's elite. Despite being forewarned by Iran's intelligence service about a potential assassination attempt, Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh dismissed the concerns. Believing Fakhrizadeh was spearheading Iran's nuclear bomb development, Israel had been seeking his elimination for over a decade. Ignoring security advice, Fakhrizadeh often drove to Absard himself, choosing his personal vehicle over a heavily armored car driven by guards, a major security lapse. Since 2004, following Israeli policy, the Mossad, Israel's foreign intelligence service, has embarked on disrupting Iran's nuclear armament efforts. Israel's approach has been direct, actively undermining Iranian nuclear enrichment facilities through sabotage and cyber warfare, and systematically targeting key Iranian nuclear scientists for elimination. From 2007, Mossad had assassinated five Iranian nuclear scientists and injured another, most under Fakhrizadeh's direct supervision, involved in what Israeli officials claimed was a secret nuclear warhead project, including the technical challenge of miniaturizing it for Iran's long-range missiles. Israel was also suspected of being involved in the death of Major General Mogadam, who had overseen the design and development of long-range ballistic missiles for Iran. Mogadam was killed in an explosion at a military base near Tehran, which housed long-range missiles capable of reaching Israel. This explosion, which also resulted in the death of 16 other officers, was widely speculated to be the work of Mossad. In 2009, an assassination attempt in Tehran, targeting Fakhrizadeh, was aborted at the last second due to a suspected compromise of one of Israel's intelligence assets. This time, a novel approach was planned. On the afternoon of November 27, 2020, Iranian operatives working for Mossad stationed a blue Nissan pickup truck along the route to Absard on a raised area with a clear view of oncoming traffic. Concealed beneath tarps in the truck's bed lay a Belgian-made 7.62mm FN belt-fed machine gun. Around 1 p.m., the operation team was alerted that Fakhrizadeh, accompanied by his wife and a convoy of armed guards, was preparing to leave for Absard. The assassin, an expert marksman, settled into his position, fine-tuned the gun sights, prepared the weapon, and lightly pressed the trigger. However, he was far from Absard, stationed over a thousand miles away, operating through a computer screen. The entire assassination squad had already vacated Iran by this time.
Despite the meticulous planning and execution of the operation, Mossad maintained its long-standing policy of ambiguity. The Mossad's alleged involvement in covert operations is often seen as a direct response to explicit threats posed by adversaries like Iran. This calculated silence from Israeli officials is believed to serve two crucial roles, preserving a facade of plausible deniability and, simultaneously, projecting a potent message of deterrence, effectively conveying a warning to those who openly threaten Israel's security. These operations, shrouded in secrecy, are understood as strategic maneuvers to neutralize imminent threats and to assert Israel's resolve in safeguarding its national interests against any form of aggression. Critics of Israel's approach argue that these actions, particularly those deemed as extrajudicial killings, raise serious ethical and legal concerns. Such operations are viewed by critics as violations of international law and human rights, with the potential to exacerbate conflicts rather than defuse them. The news from Iran following Fakhrizadeh's assassination was a maze of conflicting and mostly inaccurate reports. Several Iranian news agencies, influenced by the Revolutionary Guards, circulated a narrative of a robotic assassin and a remote-controlled operation. This version starkly conflicted with other reports describing a gunfight between assassins and bodyguards and claims of some assailants being captured or killed. This portrayal was widely ridiculed by Iranians as an attempt to cover up the security breach around one of the nation's most protected individuals. Contrary to skepticism, a robotic killer was indeed part of the operation. The true account of that afternoon's events and their buildup, now revealed, draws from interviews with American, Israeli, and Iranian officials, including intelligence personnel knowledgeable about the operation's planning and execution. The operation's success was attributed to oversights by Iran's revolutionary guards, meticulous planning and surveillance by Mossad, and a degree of disregard for his own personal safety by Fakhrizadeh. Central to the operation was the first field test of an advanced, artificial intelligence-equipped computerized firearm, equipped with multiple cameras, satellite operation, and a firing capacity of 600 rounds per minute. The assassination plot began after a series of meetings in early 2020 involving Israeli officials, led by Mossad director Yossi Cohen, and senior American officials, including President Trump, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and CIA director Gina Haspel. In late February, Mossad director Yossi Cohen outlined several potential strategies to the Americans, including targeting Fakhrizadeh, a long-standing priority for Israel since 2007. This assassination proposal received backing from American officials briefed in Washington, as confirmed by a meeting attendee. The US and Israel drew confidence from Iran's limited reaction to the strike that killed Iranian General Soleimani earlier that year. This restrained response suggested Iran's hesitance or inability to retaliate more aggressively. Subsequently, surveillance of Fakhrizadeh intensified. As more intelligence was gathered, the complexity of the task became apparent. Iran had learned from the Soleimani incident that their high-ranking officials were vulnerable. With Fakhrizadeh high on Israel's target list, Iranian authorities had significantly bolstered his security. His protection detail, from the elite Ansar unit of the Revolutionary Guards, was heavily armed and well-trained, using encrypted communication. They escorted him in convoys of up to seven vehicles, frequently altering routes and schedules to evade potential threats. Israel had employed diverse tactics in previous assassinations. Ardisher Hossein Poor, a physics professor involved in Iran's nuclear program, died mysteriously in early 2007. Sources reported that Hossein Poor was a longtime Mossad target and that he died from radioactive poisoning as part of a covert Mossad operation to halt the Iranian nuclear program. In 2010, another significant incident occurred when Majid Shariari, an expert in nuclear reactor design, was brazenly killed in Tehran. Assassins riding a motorcycle approached Shariari's car and attached a bomb to it, which was subsequently detonated remotely. In July of 2011, Darish Rizinjad, an electrical engineer working at a national security research facility, 
was killed by two gunmen on a motorcycle in Tehran. A foreign government official and a former UN nuclear inspector alleged that Rezinjad was working on high-voltage switches, parts necessary to initiate explosions needed to trigger a nuclear warhead. Years later, in January 2018, a Mossad team raided a warehouse in Tehran, which housed a vast archive of Iran's nuclear program files. The operatives used torches to cut through 32 vaults containing classified materials. The team smuggled some 50,000 pages and 163 CDs from the site, transporting them to Israel. Months later, in April, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu presented the secret records, making the case that Iranian leaders had deceived the international nuclear community by continually insisting their nuclear program was for peaceful purposes. Netanyahu presented evidence pertaining to Project Ahmad, the Iranian plan to design, construct, and test nuclear weapons. Two years later, on August 7, 2020, Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah, a senior member of Al-Qaeda, was gunned down in Tehran. Israeli operatives from Kidon, a specialized Mossad assassination unit, carried out the operation, shooting Abdullah while he was driving his car. Abdullah's daughter, who was the widow to former Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden's late son, Hamza bin Laden, was also reportedly killed in the attack. Abdullah was one of the 22 original members of the FBI list of most wanted terrorists. He was wanted by the United States for his alleged role in the American embassy bombings in Tanzania and Kenya in the late 90s. Next, in April 2021, there was an explosion at Iran's primary uranium enrichment complex which destroyed thousands of centrifuges. An Iranian investigator claimed that 300 pounds of explosives had been smuggled into the facility, concealed within equipment. Almost a year later, in May of 2022, Colonel Syed Kode was shot five times outside of his home in Tehran. Two gunmen on motorcycles reportedly opened fire on him through his car windows. Israeli officials alleged that Kode was the deputy commander of Unit 840, an Islamic Revolutionary Guard unit reportedly tasked with kidnapping and assassinating foreigners, including Israeli officials and civilians. Other sources claimed that Kode advised Iranian-backed fighters in Syria and coordinated shipments of drone and missile technology to Hezbollah. Lastly, in late May and early June of 2022, two Iranian scientists met mysterious and untimely deaths under circumstances that raised international attention. The first incident occurred on May 31st, involving Ayub Antazari, an aerospace engineer with reputed connections to Iran's military research, particularly in missile and turbine technology. His death, attributed to poison found in his food, sparked speculation about Mossad's involvement. The second incident, just days later on June 2nd, involved Cameron Agamole, a geologist based in Tehran. Like Antazari, Agamole's death was also reportedly caused by poison food. The proximity of their deaths and their scientific backgrounds further fueled theories about targeted assassinations linked to their respective fields of expertise, both of which were critical to Iran's potential military nuclear capabilities. Despite this series of covert operations and high-profile assassinations suspected to have been carried out by Mossad, the task of targeting Fakhrizadeh posed a significantly greater challenge, particularly due to his heavily guarded motorcade, which accompanied him wherever he went. When the idea of utilizing a robotic machine gun was proposed, Mossad gave it strong consideration, primarily due to the potential for enhanced operative safety. Israel opted for a specific version of the Belgian FN mag, paired with a sophisticated robotic system. The design was reportedly similar to the Sentinel-20, a product of the Spanish defense contractor Escribano. The machine gun and robot, along with components and accessories, weighed about a ton. These were smuggled into Iran in pieces and then secretly reassembled. Cameras provided a comprehensive view of the target and surroundings. The truck was then rigged with explosives for self-destruction post-operation, erasing evidence. Fakhrizadeh was raised in a devout family in Qam, the center of Shia Islam. He was 18 when the Islamic Revolution toppled Iran's monarchy, a historical reckoning that fired his imagination. He pursued dual ambitions, 
becoming a nuclear scientist and joining the military arm of the new regime. Ascending to the rank of general in the Revolutionary Guards, he obtained a PhD in nuclear physics with a thesis on neutron identification from Isfahan University of Technology. According to the former head of Iran's Atomic Energy Agency, Fakhrizadeh was instrumental in Iran's missile and nuclear ventures. He directed missile development for the Revolutionary Guards, spearheaded the country's nuclear program, and significantly contributed to the development of the Iranian drone industry. Reports from two Iranian officials suggested that he also collaborated with North Korea on missile development. At the time of his death, Fakhrizadeh was serving as Iran's deputy defense minister. Fakhrizadeh played a crucial role in circumventing international sanctions to acquire sensitive equipment and technology. He rarely took breaks and avoided media exposure. His professional life, largely shrouded in secrecy, was better known to Mossad than to the Iranian public. Fakhrizadeh's career was so enigmatic that even his children seemed unaware of its true nature. Iran's nuclear program remains the subject of global scrutiny and concern. Despite Iran's insistence that its nuclear ambitions are purely for peaceful purposes, such as energy production and medical research, the US and Israel, among other nations, express significant skepticism. Their distrust stems from Iran's history of clandestine nuclear activities and its refusal to fully cooperate with international nuclear watchdogs, like the International Atomic Energy Agency. The assassination of Fakhrizadeh, a pivotal figure in Iran's nuclear narrative, has raised significant international alarm. Known for his deep involvement in Iran's nuclear program, Fakhrizadeh's activities were not just limited to scientific advancements, but also extended to strategic and possibly military dimensions. This blurring of lines between civilian and potential military nuclear capabilities has fueled global apprehension. His death not only spotlighted the opaque aspects of Iran's nuclear ambitions but also raised critical questions about the future direction of these pursuits, especially in the context of regional security and international relations. This incident serves as a stark reminder of the ongoing complexities and uncertainties surrounding Iran's nuclear intentions, further complicating the already intricate tapestry of Middle Eastern geopolitics. This event not only heightened tensions between Iran and its adversaries, but also cast a shadow over the prospects of reviving the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, commonly known as the Iran Nuclear Deal. The deal, which saw Iran agree to limit its nuclear activities in exchange for the lifting of economic sanctions, has been in jeopardy since the U.S. unilaterally withdrew from it in 2018. In the wake of Fakhrizadeh's death, Iran vowed to continue its nuclear program, and there have been reports of accelerated nuclear activities, which further complicates the international diplomatic landscape. The situation remains a delicate balancing act for global powers, as they seek to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons, while avoiding a full-scale escalation in an already volatile region. The story of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh reflects the broader and ongoing saga of Iran's nuclear ambitions, international diplomacy, and regional power dynamics. His legacy, shrouded in secrecy and controversy, continues to influence the geopolitical chessboard, making it a critical chapter in understanding the complexities of the Middle East. <laughs>